So now we're going to add a complicating factor, and that is allowing either the acid or the base to be weak. Keep one of them strong and allow the other one to be weak. And look at our titrations, okay? So we're going to start where the acid is weak and the base is strong. Let's um, write that reaction. I think I've got that, oops, yeah. Let me write it up here on the board. All right, so acetic acid, weak acid. It is in water. Sodium hydroxide is the strong base. Remember, we don't want that spectator getting in the way because we want to be able to write the reaction, which is a one-way arrow and a proton swap. The acid gives to the base, and you're left with these products. One-way reaction need, means we need to put moles into it if we were going to do the calculations, which we're not ready to do yet, okay? So that is the reaction. Once this reaction has happened, there is weak things present. Maybe there's some of this left over. Maybe there's some of this left over. Maybe there's some of both of these left over. And there's a whole lot of different possibilities. But if there's a weak thing present, okay, then we're going to have an equilibrium taking place as well. So we will always have this equilibrium present in the solution. This acid is sitting in water. Not only is it reacting with a base, if you add a base, it, if there's any present, is in water. And this is an equilibrium. The water reaction with the acid gives you the conjugate base and H3O plus. Okay? Now I see students who, um, what, I don't want, I don't want to go there. We'll forget what I was going to say. We've got a weak acid, it's doing its equilibrium thing. Okay? Now, if there's some of this left over, this equilibrium happens. If there's some of this, yeah, this equilibrium is happening, but it might be happening with this guy reacting with water to produce its conjugate acid. So let's say that we get to the point where I've used up all this, used up all this, and this is present. The CH3, COO minus would be in that solution. It is going to reestablish an equilibrium with its conjugate, so it accepts a proton from the water. And when it does that, it becomes OH minus, okay? So this one would be happening if we had the, acetate, the acetic acid in there. But if we get to the point where we have got acetic, the acetate ion and it's sitting in solution, it is going to do what acetate ions do. And what is this? Is it an acid or is it a base? Well, it's a base. And as a base, it produces OH minus ions. Okay, so those are the things that are happening in the solution reaction-wise. Let's examine what is happening. Um, hmm, that's all there. Let us examine what's going to happen with the pH as the reaction takes place. Let's imagine that I'm starting with a flask, and in this flask is this acid. Okay? And let's assume that it's a 0.1 molar solution of that acid. What would be the pH in this flask? Well, it would be less than 7 for sure, and it would not be a full 1.0 because when it's a weak acid, you don't have the same concentration of H3O plus as you have the weak acid. So it's going to be lower than 7, but it's not going to be all the way down at 1. And we look on this little map here, and we see in this case it's above 2, almost to 3 uh, with this solution because of the pKa value, and we're going to practice calculating that pH. All right, so then what happens? We add, we start adding some of the base, okay? So we start putting some of this base in there, and it uses, we're just putting a little bit in, and it neutralizes it, okay, and converts some of this over to that. And so what do we end up producing for a little bit? We end up producing for a while a buffer solution. So initially you have a weak acid. Then you have this buffer range. Okay? Let's talk about why that is again. You add a little bit of base, but not enough to react with all of this. A little bit of base is going to convert some of this over to this. And anytime you have a weak acid and its conjugate base in solution, you have a pH. And it's going to resist 
change to pH. So let's go over to the monitor for just a minute. The general shape of this is it jumps up initially and it kind of levels off, okay? Because during this buffer range, it's resisting change to pH. We did not see that leveling off when they were a strong acid, strong base. It just steadily increased, okay? But this one pops up and levels off because you have a buffer being formed. Then you're going to hit the equivalence point, okay? And let's go back to our board here and see why at the equivalence point would it have a pH above 7. At the equivalence point, you've consumed all of this and all of this. By definition, equivalence point is when you've got equal amounts of those two. What have you turned it into? You've turned it into this thing. What is this thing? It's a base. What's the pH of a base? It's above 7. So you'll see here that the pH is above 7. Now you can't see exactly what it is. There's some work involved to figure out the pH at the equivalence point. But you know it's not going to be 7 because you don't just have water. You have got a base in that solution. Alright, so then we pass up the equivalence point. We start adding and we add more of this. We've already used up all of our acid and we start adding base. What happens? It jumps up and it just steadily climbs from that point up. There's no buffer in there. There's just a weak base and you're adding strong base to it. Weak base is in there and you just keep adding some strong base. Alright, so that's the graph and that's again called, called a tri titration curve. Now let's consider the opposite scenario. This was a weak acid and a strong base. Let's do a strong acid and a weak base. Let's do this as our strong acid, H3, HCl. What do I write as a strong acid? H3O+. Plus. The Cl minus is a spectator. It will get in your way if you write them down. Weak base, write it all. Strong guy pushes it to completion. Do a proton swap, all right? The H3O plus is going to donate, and that's going to leave me with um, NH4 plus when it receives it, and H2O when it donated it. So there's that reaction, okay? So let's consider... Once we have that reaction, we could also then, if we're at the equivalence point, have formed, what is this guy right here? This guy right here is a, well, let's see here. You tell me what it is. Once you've got to the equivalence point and you have this formed, what is that? Well, it is an acid, right? Because it is a proton donor. And as an acid, it is going to have this reaction take place. The acid that you formed is sitting in water. Acids that are weak in water undergo this equilibrium where the acid donates to the water, making ammonia. The water accepts that proton and becomes H3O+. Now, start, students start seeing this and they just think, well, whatever you write here, you write the reverse. Typically, that's the case, but it's not, it's not for any other reason than what is the reaction of this guy in water, okay? So there we have that reaction taking place in water. So let's imagine the graph for this guy. We start off monitoring the flask. The flask has got the base in it, okay? So it's got a high pH. So that's what I've got in my flask. Let's draw the flask out. Okay, so that's in my flask. The strong acid is in the burette, okay? So the acid is up here. So what's going to be the pH inside of that flask? Well, it's going to be high. It's a high pH because it's got a base in it. As we start adding a little bit of acid, we're going to convert some of this base to its conjugate acid, and we're going to have a weak base and its conjugate acid. What is that? Well, that's a buffer. So we'll have this buffer range, and we see that it drops and kind of levels off a little bit. Okay? So it starts at a 11.12, if it was a 0.1 molar solution. We have, again, our buffer range. And look at that point. I want to talk about that point. Halfway to the equivalence point. What does that mean? That's when you converted half of this 
to this. And that makes these two concentrations exactly the same. Let me get out of the way so you can see that. If you're, the equivalence point is where you've had equal amounts of both of this. This has completely gone away and it's all been converted to that. That's that uh, um, red dot on the way down there. Halfway is when you've converted half of this, and you still have half of it, over to this, and you've got equal amounts of both of those. pH is equal to pKa when you're halfway to the equivalence point. And then when you're at the equivalence point there, it has got just a weak acid. If it's just got a weak acid, then it's going to have a pH less than 7. So let me get rid of that picture there so you can see that when you're at the equivalence point where, where it looks like it's running around 5 on that graph, you will always be less than. Okay? Now, this is the Y. The Y is at less than 5. At the equivalence points, you've consumed these. You only have this, and this is a weak acid. Weak acids have a pH less than 7. Boom. All right? Now, how do I keep it straight in my mind? I don't usually give my little keep straight in your mind because I like you to form your own things. But how I keep straight in my mind, the acid is strong, he wins. And you have a pH that's acidic. Okay? That's one of the ways that I keep that straight. But this is the why. The true why is you've made a weak acid at the equivalence point. All right, in this case, it's 5.26. All right, so I put this procedure back up. I want to put it all up there, okay? Um, because what we're going to do is we're going to, as when I get a chance here and, and get myself some space to work, we're going to start doing some calculations with this. And we're going to run through these other scenarios of being, um, you know, where I kept on saying, this doesn't hurt, happen when it's a strong acid, strong base. This doesn't happen when it's a strong acid, strong base. You make sure you keep this list of what to do handy to where you're looking at it. When I do a step, stop, look at your list, and make sense of what I'm doing versus the words that you're seeing on here because you've got to get to where you can figure out the next step. There's too many variations to memorize every solution I do. You've got to understand what you're doing along the way. All right, so let's see what we've got here. Before we work this problem, let's just look at the problem itself. I have a 10 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. Is it an acid or is it a base? Well, that's a strong base. It's reacting with formic acid. That's what HCOOH is. Is that a strong acid or a strong base? Well, that's a weak acid. I said base. It's a weak acid. Okay, so we've got that. So we've got to start with our one-way reaction. I want you to figure out which one of those is the net ionic. That means I've left out the spectator ions. Which one of those is the net ionic reaction between those? I said this is the first step, and for students, the most challenging step is getting started. So look, examine those and choose the one that is correct. All right, the right one is number three. I am going to... Um, Erase the board and write that reaction, and we're going to start calculations with this. Okay, so we have our reaction written here. The base was strong, so we just write OH minus. Here is a complete acid because it's weak. I do my proton swap. That's my first step. Students can have a 90% understanding of this stuff, but if they can't do that first step, uh, they're going to be lost. ICF table, what do we plug in? We plug in moles. So we have to go about calculating the moles of each thing so that I can put it into the table. So let's start with the OH minus. The moles of OH minus comes from the moles of the sodium hydroxide, right? The source of sodium hydroxide is that. So the molarity of sodium hydroxide is 0.1 moles per liter. The volume of sodium hydroxide is 10 milliliters or 0.01, okay, 0.01, that's going to give me 0.001 moles of the sodium hydroxide, 0 0.001. Now, the moles of formic acid, HCOOH, that's going to be the molarity of formic acid, which is 0 0.15 moles per liter, times the volume of formic acid, which is 30 milliliters, and that's going to give me 0 0.0045 moles. Okay, and I can put this here. 
Now this is a titration. There's nothing to be said about having any of this yet, so I'm going to put a zero right there. This reaction is going to go to completion, so I'm going to react the smaller of the two. 0010, okay? And I'm going to produce that right there. This goes away. I have consumed all of the strong base. I end up with 0 0.0035 of the acid and 0 0.0010 of the base. Now what I would like for you to do, and you choose whether you do it or not, is stop the video and go back and look at the three possible scenarios of what happens when you have your F line and see if you can predict which way we're going to go with this. If you struggle, when we resume, I'll tell you what it is. All right, what do we have? We have a weak acid and we have its conjugate base both present in solution. That is a buffer. And as a buffer, it's wonderful to use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. pH equals the pKa plus the log of the concentration of the base over the concentration of the acid. But I told you earlier that you could use moles instead because they're both in the same flask, they both have the same volume. So I look for the Ka value. Is it given to me in the problem? Yes, 1.7 times 10 to the minus 4. If you're working a problem and that's not given, then you do a search for it. If it's an online problem, they probably have a table right there for you to click on in order to find that. Moles of base, which of these two things is the base? It's this one, okay? So 0 0.0010. It's 0 0.0035, 0 0.0035, okay? So the pH is going to be 3.23. All right, so I am at the, the scenario, and I like this one. I like being right here. When you're before the equivalence point, Okay, you can calculate the pH by taking, once you get to the F line, the Henderson Hasselbalch equation. I want to revisit that statement I said that when you're halfway to the equivalence point, pH is equal to pKa. Let's just consider halfway to the equivalence point. Halfway to the equivalence point would be half as much as this, all right? So let us, in a different color, consider halfway to the equivalence point. That would be when I have, what is half of that? doing this on the fly, so it's a little dangerous. Two, two, five, right? So I'm consuming 0 0.00225. I'm consuming 0 0.00225. I'm producing 0 0.0225. That is going to produce for me, when I subtract these, equal amounts, 225. Four, five. Yeah, that's correct. Going to produce the equal amounts of those two guys. So when we take the log of the base of the acid, they're the same. And so this term goes away because the log of 1 is 0. And that's why the pH is equal to pKa when you're halfway to the equivalence point. All right, what's next? All right, they tell me I'm going to do one that's at the equivalence point. All right, so you, um, I'll erase the board and we'll work on this one. Okay, so we are now going to pick up here and be at the equivalence point. Now I am going to just tell you straight up, when it is at the equivalence point, it is a pain in the butt to do this problem. It is the link most lengthy. Most of your exams will have at least one of these, so don't think that we won't give it to you if it's at the equivalence point. Um, but you need to be prepared that this is a big process because there is multiple equilibria we have to consider. All right, um, before we do this, we got a strong base and a weak acid. When we're, it's all said and done, would you expect the pH to be less than 7, equal to 7, or greater than 7? Well, at the equivalence point, it's going to be a basic solution, so it's going to be above 7 because you've got a base in there. Or you can remember, 
it's a strong base, he wins, okay? It's going to be a basic solution when it's all said and done. So I know it's going to, when it's done, is the pH must be greater than 7, and we're going to look for that when we're finished. Now, they told me this, and I had this from earlier. It's 30 milliliters of the 0.15 molar. And we keep on adding base until we reach the equivalence point. By definition, that would be when this number is the same as what it was on what the acid is. So it's going to be 0 0.0045. Now, we're starting afresh. We're going until we get to this equivalence point. We consume the smaller. Well, they're both the same. So we're consuming both of these. And we're producing that. So we have nothing there, nothing there, and we have some of the formate, that's the name of that guy, the formate ion present. Now again, you want to be thinking your way through this. So stop and look at the procedure and examine those three scenarios, A, B, and C, and which one do we have here? Well, we have the scenario where we have a weak thing only left over. It's not a weak conjugates of each other. It's only the weak thing. And what does it tell you you have to do? You have to write the reaction of this guy reestablishing equilibrium in water. So we're going to take what we have. It is sitting in water. It will do the weak acid thing, which is to accept, I mean, weak base thing, I'll keep that in mind. This is a base, it's a proton acceptor. It will accept a proton from the water. When it accepts a proton, we put that H plus on it, there we have. Who did he accept it from? The water, so the water is left as OH minus. Now, as an equilibrium, did we work in moles? No. We worked in molarity. So we want to do an ICE table now and put molarity into that table. Well, I know moles, but I need molarity. Molarity is moles divided by the volume in liters. Well, it tells me I have 30 milliliters of the, of the um, acid got put in there, so I know I definitely have 30 milliliters, which is 0.03 liters, okay? But they didn't tell me how much of this I needed. I, I have to do a little subroutine and figure out how much base did I have to add in order to get there? Well, to get the, num the volume of base, you start with the moles of base. You know how much of that you had to add um, because... You're at the equivalence point, and you knew that number had to be this value. You don't want moles, you want volume. The basis concentration is 0.1 mole per liter. So when I divide by 0.1, I have 0 0.045 liters. All right, so we're dividing by 75 milliliters or 0 0.075 liters. And now I finally know the molarity of this formate ion. The molarity is 0 0.060. And I can plug that into my ICE table. Now you might want to stop rather than me repeating myself and go back and say, how did she do that? Because that's an important step. You have to put molarity in here. All right, before this equilibrium is established, I used up all of that. I don't have any of uh, this anywhere to be found. Well, maybe a little bit because it's water, but nothing significant. Some of this reacts. I produce on this side, okay? It's 0 0.060 minus X. It's X. It's X. Before I plug those in, let's consider this is an equilibrium. It's an equilibrium for a base. So it's going to be... HCOOH concentration times OH minus concentration divided by HCOO minus concentration. I encourage you not to skip that step. Write it out because that'll trigger in your mind that I need a KB because it was a base, but the KA is given in the problem. So to get the KB, I'll take 1 times 10 to the minus 14 divided by the Ka they give me, which was 1.7 times 10 to the minus 4. I'll go ahead and get a number for that. What is it? It is 
I don't know. 5.88 times 10 to the minus 11. Carrying an extra sig fig along. And that's going to be equal to x for this times x, that's x squared, divided by va that value, 0 0.0, oops, sorry. That's supposed to be down on the denominator. Let's find a piece of paper and erase that. That's going to be equal to x squared divided by 0. Point, what was it? 060 minus x. All right, so now we have to solve for x. What are we going to do? Is that a tiny kb? Yes. Assume that x is very, very small. So we can ignore that. Multiply this over here, and then take the square root, okay? We're going to do all that, and that's going to determine for me that x is equal to 1.63 times 10 to the minus 6, okay? Now, what is x? x is the OH minus concentration. So if I take the negative log of that one number, I'm going to get the POH. Not the pH, the pOH. And once I have that pOH, I will have to subtract it, and it's going to give me a pOH. Let's go ahead and get that number. Getting, getting scrunched here, aren't I? 5.78 is the value of the pOH. Okay. But the problem didn't want to know the pOH. The problem wanted to know the pH. And we established the pH better be greater than 7. So how do we take a pOH and get a pH? Well, we find a little space on our board somewhere. How about right here? All right, 14 minus 5.78 is equal to a value of, I can't remember, 8.21. That's my pH, and that is greater than 7, and that is how we work that problem. Now, how did I start this problem? I told you this is kind of a pain. <laughs> Why is it a pain? You first do the one-way reaction, then you must consider the equilibrium, and you have to do all the equilibrium. There is no shortcut here at all. If it's a buffer, there's a shortcut, but if you're at the equivalence point, be prepared to do two separate calculations and try to keep everything straight. Takes a lot of practice. Practice, practice. All right, what's next? All right, we're going to do another pH at the equivalence point problem, okay? Um, so we're going, to, we're going to see it modeled by me, and in this case, we have got HCl, which is a strong acid, and a weak base instead. Okay, so I'll come back and we'll work that in just a moment. All right, so as our first step, it's to write the one-way reaction. HCl is a strong acid. Write H3O plus to represent your strong acid. And then I look and it says something about methylamine and it gives me a KB for it. That must be my base. Now, I know what the formula of methylamine is, but that doesn't mean you do. There is nothing wrong with just saying, oh, it's a base. Okay, I can call it B for base. Strong acid pushes it to completion. What will happen when you do a proton swap? Well, what will the base become? It'll become BH plus. And what will the, the H3O plus become? H2O. Okay, now just so that you can know, methylamine looks like this, but you don't need to know it to do the problem. So if you add an H+, plus, it is NH3+. Plus, okay? I'll work it with B's because you don't need to have the formula to work the problem. All right, so now it says it's going to be at the equivalence point, and it gives me the molarity of both of the things. So it's a one-way reaction. I'm going to do ICF, going to completion. Did they tell me how much I would have? Well, here's a little secret. The pH at the equivalence point is going to be the same, whether it's a big jug or it's a little bitty amount. So it doesn't matter what you choose, okay, for a volume. It is easier if you choose a volume and not kind of work in theoretical. So I'm going to choose that I have 100 milliliters of this guy, okay? That's going to be my choice. Is it the base? It doesn't matter. Which one did I do when I worked it? I said that I had 100 milliliters of 
can't remember which one. Oh, nope, I did 100 milliliters of the acid. Okay, so I want to keep consistent with my notes over there. Okay, so I'm choosing to use 100 milliliters of this, and if I have 100 milliliters and I want to know the moles of it, the moles of H3O plus is the same as the moles of HCl. So I'm going to take my molarity of HCl, which is 0.1, that's moles per liter, times my volume of 0.1, okay, liters, that's 100 milliliters is 0.1 liter, right? And that's going to give me 0.01 moles. So I'm going to put 0.01. Am I right? 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.01. Okay. So I chose an amount of acid sitting in my flask, and I'm adding this base to the flask, or vice versa, but that is that starting point. I do know that if I'm at the equivalence point, that this has got to be the same. Regardless of its concentration, the moles have to be the same. Before the reaction, there's none of this, and there's lots of water. Don't need to worry about it. I consume the smaller one and produce its conjugate acid over here. So I am at the equivalence point. Now what's left over? What is this guy? Is he an acid or is he a base? Well this is the base and this is its conjugate acid. I have in solution only the conjugate acid. So I need to take this conjugate acid and realize it's going to reestablish equilibrium with its conjugate base in water. So I write the acid in water, do the proton swap. It becomes B and H3O+. Plus. This is a weak acid in water, so it's an equilibrium arrow that you see right there. Okay. As an equilibrium, we need to do an ICE table, not an ICF table. We need to put molarity into this table. What is this? This is just moles, okay? So if I need molarity right here, I'm going to have to obtain the molarity, and I'm going to give myself a little bit of room over here to do that, okay? Molarity is moles per liter. Well, this is the moles. I need to divide by the volume. I had 100 milliliters of this guy. That's 0.1 liter. How much of this am I going to have to get to the equivalence point? Well, I can look at these numbers right now for myself, and I say it's got twice the concentration, so it's going to have half the volume. But let's say you couldn't see that. That's okay if you can't at this point, okay? I see it's twice the molarity, so it's going to take half the volume to get to the same point. Let's say you don't see that. What did we do before? What we did is we took the, molar the moles, O, 1, O moles and said, I don't want moles, I want liters of the base. The concentration of the base is 0.2 moles per liter and that's going to give me the 0.05 um, when I divide those values out. Okay, you can't see that zero, it doesn't matter. It'll give me the 0.05 that I see right here. And that is my molarity now when I divide these numbers out. The, va the value for this is going to be 0 0.0667 um, molar. And that's what's going to go in here. Okay, so those are zeros. We don't have any of those present before this equilibrium gets established. Some of that's going to react. I'm going to produce on this side. I'm going to have 0 0.0667 minus x, x, and x. This was an acid, right? It's a proton donor. So I need a Ka, and that Ka will be equal to the concentration of the base at equilibrium times the H3O plus concentration at equilibrium divided by the, um, sorry, I'll look it up here, the BH plus. So I need a Ka. I have in the problem a Kb given to me. It's 4.4 .4 times 10 to the minus 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Kw, 
divided by the Ka, Kb, and that's going to give me a value of 2.27 times 10 to the minus 11. And that is going to be equal to x squared over 0 0.0667 minus x. We can make the assumption that x is tiny compared to this value and ignore it. We can take this times this number as we bring it up and take the square root. That's going to give me an x value equal to 1.23 times 10 to the minus 6. Checking that assumption, it was a very good assumption that it's much smaller than this number. Now what is X? X is the H3O plus concentration. So if I take the negative log of 1.23 times 10 to the minus 6, I am going to get a pH equal to 5.91. Should it be an acidic pH? Well, yes. You create it at the equivalence point an acid. It should be equivalent. It should be an acidic pH, so it should be below 7. So that is our check there. I didn't ask that question at the very beginning. Typically, I would do that before I work the problem is think, where should it be? If you don't remember there at the beginning, remember, if the acid is strong, it wins. It should be an acidic solution. The real reason is because you're producing at the equivalence point an acid. Okay. We have worked our way through several titration problems. We're going to stop here and I will produce for you and have for you some supplemental additional example problems to watch if you want to do.